Hi all. Everything in my videos is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use and fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion, but you should look into this information for yourself. But I'm pretty sure I'm right. So I wanted to do a short video about Harry and Megan's legal case because I see all over the internet right now, people are advising Megan to drop the case as quickly as possible. So I thought, let's just take a quick look at it. So first off, we are aware that these two people are just sue happy. They currently have four lawsuits against the Daily Mail, the Sun, the Daily Express, and the Daily Mirror. That does not include the lawsuit that they filed on behalf of Archie. And these suits are an attempt by the couple literally to just control the narrative about them. And quite frankly, it's just not going well. So let's talk about the big lawsuit, as I like to call it. That's the one that's getting the most attention. That is the one that they filed against the Daily Mail. So here's some background for everybody, just in case you do happen to live under a rock. First, Megan wrote a letter to her father, Thomas Markle, after he was found to have been duped by the media into taking some photos before the wedding. We all know the story. She showed this letter to the Buckingham Palace press office, at least five friends that we know of, probably more, and her father who she mailed the letter to. Now, the letter was kept private by her father until five friends of Megan supposedly decided on their own and independently and behind Megan's back to talk to People Magazine about it and about Megan's relationship with her father. So these five friends claim that Thomas was able to reach Megan, that her phone number had not changed, which, by the way, is something she recently had to show the court because Thomas stated he was unable to reach her. But in the vein of being fair, I do remember seeing a segment of a video somewhere where he was dialing her phone number and it would show what would happen when he did and it very clearly was not going through. So while she has the same number, I believe that she's blocked him. So these friends claimed that Thomas Markle didn't call or text his daughter and she was so sympathetic to him and felt so badly about the way the press had duped him. They said Megan and Harry tried to get her father to London. They sent cars and envoys to his home, all of which he refused. So the letter was written, and I find it very interesting that these friends, who supposedly only heard about this letter one time, were able to quote from it in their interview with People Magazine. But this really upset Thomas, and that's why he decided to release the letter to the public. And here he is explaining his reasoning. Article the friends of Megan were saying that she wrote a conciliatory uh, letter to me. She was reaching out to me and trying to be, make peace with me. Uh, and she was being lo loving. They dissed me, calling me a liar. It seemed to me like it was set up. I felt I had to defend myself. So I published part of the letter. Thomas. So when the interview came out in the magazine, Megan did not defriend these five people who she claims spoke without her permission and behind her back, and she did not sue People Magazine. But why would she? Because after all, the article painted her in a good light. Megan's friends stated in their interview that the letter was her reaching out as a loving daughter, but when the letter was actually published, it was shown that that was not true at all. So on October 1st of 2019, Megan officially filed against the Daily Mail. And in the court documents, she states that the media are the ones that destroyed her relationship with her father and that only half of the letter was published. And if the other half had been published, it would not have looked bad on her. And to that, her father simply said, I only released parts of the letter because it was so painful, which I completely believe. So as Megan is gearing up for the lawsuit, the Mail responded by pointing out that the royals rely on publicity about themselves and their lives in order to maintain their privileged positions and promote themselves. And they said, we didn't do anything wrong. And Megan is basically saying that the letter was copyrighted and therefore nobody had the right to republish it. However, there is a defense known as the fair dealing which exists under British copyright law, and that allows publication of limited sections of some copyright material in the normal course of news reporting. 
Megan's lawyers said that the paper stirred up and created the dispute that she has with her father, but it later came out that Megan and her father hadn't spoken in over two years, so nobody really knew how her father felt about that. Also about the preliminary hearing, the People magazine article was talked about and the fact that it was speculated that the friends spoke to the magazine because Megan directed her friends to do so. Her side, of course, denied this completely. So in the end, the judge struck out three parts of her case, that the newspaper acted dishonestly and in bad faith, that it deliberately dug up and stirred up conflict between Megan and her father, and that it had an obvious agenda of publishing intrusive or offensive stories about her. Now, it was right about that time that Megan was ordered to pay $105,000 in legal fees for the paper. Then the next round started up in court when the Daily Mail wanted the names of those five friends who went to People magazine to be made public, arguing that her friends will be witnesses and that the letter was referenced in their interview, but Megan said that they had a right to privacy. And of course, the Daily Mail lawyers pointed out that it was her friends who started all of this by talking about the letter in the first place. And the judge did decide they could remain anonymous for right now, but more than likely, their names are going to come out at trial. So now, finally, we've come to the third part of this lawsuit, and last week, the lawyers for the paper applied to the court to amend its defense and use the book Finding Freedom, stating that Meghan Markle had colluded on information to the authors. Markle's attorney denied that and said they did not collaborate with them, they did not do an interview for it, they did not give them photographs. Omid himself went on television and denied it as well. Quotes and stories in the book are, are incredibly personal, aren't they? Um, I know they've denied it, but did you speak with Harry and Meghan directly? No, we didn't speak with Harry and Meghan directly. They didn't cooperate with the book, and there's certainly no secret off-the-record conversations that have taken place either. But so on Tuesday, the judge ruled against Meghan Markle and said that the male can use the book and told Megan that she cannot appeal against the ruling, but her lawyers have the option of taking that decision to the Court of Appeals down the road. So now Megan has to hand over six months worth of text messages, call logs, emails, and WhatsApp messages. I find all of that denial from Omid to be very damning because of what he wrote in the author's note in the back of the book, that he did speak to the couple. He's for sure going to make an interesting witness. So let's not forget that all of this was over a letter that was sent to Thomas Markle by his daughter. And once again, Omid went on live TV and said the following. This letter was very much to repair the relationship with the father. She knew in her heart of hearts that this was going to be released to the papers. Thomas has a record of this. This is exactly the man that she knows. And so many of those things in that letter were written with the public in mind. She very much wanted to set the record straight. The judges. So this case is due to go to trial January of 2021. And so now it is on the internet that people are telling Megan that she should back out of this lawsuit before it gets any worse. I don't see how she can. Because number one, if she pulls out now, it's just going to be open season on them. And I think she knows that. Number two, it's definitely going to make her look like she has something to hide. And number three, it appears she cannot just drop the case unless the paper agrees as well. And I don't think that's going to happen. As for the accusations that Megan colluded with the book, I do find it somewhat damning that she made several statements out in public that she wanted the book to be released earlier so that her side of the story could be told. And I also find it interesting that she said she didn't cooperate with the book and there are multiple things wrong with the book, but yet she's not suing Omid. Have a nice day.